This is the second video on partial molar volume. I'm going to show the equations needed to calculate partial molar volume from mass and density data. This constitutes another way to do this calculation, which some people may find easier. This method yields an estimate of partial molar volume, but might be more applicable to real data than the prior one. For sure, it's easier to use. The data set consists of solution densities for each ratio of ethanol and water from 1% ethanol to 100% ethanol. In the notes is a link to a previous video which gives a little more derivation. Here we have data for percent ethanol in water along with its measured density. I'm only showing a little of the data. If you want the rest, it's available on the Wikipedia ethanol data page. Step one is to get an equation for data interpolation so that we can precisely know the solution density at a nearby point that's not currently in the data set. For example, suppose we wanted to know 1.01% ethanol instead of 1% ethanol. Although we could use a polynomial fit to get the nearby data point, I will instead use a linear interpolation between these data points since they are already close. Any new data point by linear interpolation is predicted by this equation right here. In the example where we have where we want one where we want to find the density at 1.01 percent, uh, the way you do this to follow this equation, the uh, y1 it will be um, 0 0.99520. 0 0.99520 is right there. The uh, okay, so the y1 is there, y2 is right here, x1 is right there, that's one, and x2 is two, and then the x that you see right here is 1.01. .01. So you just plug all that data in over here, and it pops out 0.995182 or 0.995816 if you carry out a little bit more decimals. Steps two and three are to write an equation for the number of moles of ethanol or number of moles of water based on 1,000 grams of total mass. Since we have percentage data, we can just use the molecular weight of ethanol and let X be the percent of ethanol. So I've shown these equations right, right here and right here. Steps four and five are to form the molar ratios, moles of ethanol over moles of water, for each of the percentages, percentages, or the fractional percentages where you've stepped just ever so slightly away and predicted the density. So here we have moles of ethanol for ratio one over moles of water for ratio one. Then in ratio two, we have moles of ethanol. Instead of at 1%, it's going to be at 1.01% and the same moles of water at 1.01%. You do that at 2.01%, 3.01%, etc. for all the data. In step six, we determine the volume of ethanol for each of the percentages from the above two steps. If you, if you have used data fitted to a polynomial instead of interpolated values, then it's important that the density fit equation be used to determine rho, your density, in both cases, because the difference is what's important. Since I have used interpolated data, there's no issue with using the actual rho value, uh, and then, of course, the interpolated rho value. So what I'm talking about here is we have, uh, we have ratio 1, you define ratio 1, times the molecular weight of ethanol plus the molecular weight of water, and that's got to be divided by rho, and rho for x, where x is either 0%, 1%, 2%, etc. Then in V2, we'll have V2 is going to be x, but now x is still 1%, but it's going to be plus 0.01, so it'll be V2 at 1.01%. That's going to be ratio 2, where we use the x plus 0.01. Ratio 2 times the molecular weight of ethanol plus the molecular weight of water divided by rho, and this is the one where I'll be using the rho uh, that was that was done by, that was obtained from interpolation, whereas if you are using fitting value, here you would use the rho 
determined by your fit, but here you would also have used the row determined by your fit, whereas I can use the one that came from the data set. That's the only difference. Step seven is to calculate the partial molar volume from your data. So we have our V1 at X minus V2, which is at X plus 0.01. That's going to turn out to have been in cubic centimeters per mole. We identified ratio 1 minus ratio 2. And so that's what gives us partial molar volume. And we're, the reason this is an estimate is we're saying this is partial molar volume at that percentage, when in fact we know it's a tiny step away from that percentage, which is pretty common for differential problems. Finally, what we want to do is graph our partial molar volume that we found. That was this column right here. It was that answer right there. We want to graph the partial molar volume versus the mole fraction. In the last video, I had shown you how to go about finding the mole fraction, and I just repeated it here. It's kind of trivial. So then we'll be plotting partial molar volume as if it always occurred at this particular percentage, even though it's a tiny step away. And, um, and we'll be plotting it versus mole fraction. And so that's the final answer. If you wanted to do this for water instead of ethanol, you would just go back and, uh, and use water where we've used ethanol, and it works out quite easily. Thank you.